course, we're going to move along. International Academy of Flint. We're going to have a, some crazy speakers here today. If you wish to call in, you probably know the number 239-5733. 239-5733. Three, three. And if you'd like to call and ask, we've got two students here, middle school kids from our robotics program. They're going to talk to you a little bit about some awards they won, even at the middle school age, even at the middle school age for robotics. And uh, putting together something was rather unusual <clears throat> because they didn't do it above ground. They did it underwater. I'm trying to get a little spooky there. Underwater. And these guys were pretty good at doing that. And Mark, we have Mark Smith with us. He's an all-around. He is the master of disaster. That's what I call it <laughs> because Thank of his you, highly skilled knowledge and uh, uh, associated other skills related to uh, communication and citizens' uh, emergency response team and uh, just a host of other things that he gets involved in. So we're going to talk about that real quickly. We'll try to get everybody equal map, um, mic time. But I need to let you know, we had Kindergarten Roundup this past week. We had I'm so given 211,000 tours. And uh, we had great fun with folks. What a, what a great group of folks came in and the little ones brought with them their big eyes and they were so so cautious and so timid. And then when they'd get in with the class, when with the kids, they would suddenly lose their timid <laughs> it was just marvelous to see these little guys, and it was such fun. It really was. And then we toured our building and uh, met some people, got to talk to some teachers, so I think all of the guests appreciated that very much. However, if you missed it, grandparents and parents, if you're listening, if you missed our kindergarten roundup, it's okay. Come on in anyway. Just come on in and uh, hopefully hook up with me and we'll take you around the building and show you and meet some people and we'll try not to interrupt classes too much. We were kind of prepared for interruptions last week, but we can still sneak in, we'll still sneak in and talk to some teachers while they're, hopefully we won't interrupt instruction, but sometimes uh, there's a little downtime and we can pull a teacher over to the side. So we had a great time doing that, we really, really did. And of course, folks enrolled with us well. I don't know where our enrollment is now. I know last time I checked, we had a class filled. Uh, and I know, in fact, by now we have more than a class, I'm sure. So anyway, uh, there's still plenty of room. But do not delay, please. Do not delay. Okay, let's move into our program. Number to call, 239-5733. 239-5733. And you'll be uh, hearing the voice of Mr. Callahan on the line. And he will direct your call to our, you know, our folks on the air. Mark, you came in late, but we're going to put you on first. We're going to put you on first, buddy. I know you're all dressed up looking like a $2 nickel. <laughs> so we're, we're going to, uh, I know you've got to be somewhere at 12. So we're going to. As do you. Uh, well, I sort of do, but you're speaking. I'm not. Yes, I'm sir. just sitting there with gaping eyes observing my hero, Mark. Oh, come, come, down, down. come down. But anyway, where are you going to be at, at 12 o'clock? Tell us about that, buddy. At 12 o'clock, I'm going to be at the Ballinger Square Civic Club meeting, and we're, I'm going to be addressing the Citizens Radio Patrol. Mm -hmm. Now, the Citizens Radio Patrol was formed here. Official kickoff was Halloween. Now, if anybody listening can actually be part of the Citizens Radio Patrol, correct? Oh, absolutely. That's what we're trying to do. We encourage here. it. I'll give you a brief overview. Two years ago, the Flint Police Department migrated to the new computerized 800 megahertz radios. This left a marvelous radio infrastructure behind the VHF system. Chief Tolbert, who had participated in a radio patrol project like this in Detroit, brought the idea to Flint. What we do is we have magnetic signs to go on the side of the door identifying you as citizen volunteers of the Blue Badge Project with the Flint Police Department. We have a flashing yellow strobe that goes on the car so everyone knows when you're creeping through the neighborhood at five miles an hour, you're probably not trying to be inconspicuous. You have a reason there. <coughs> Excuse me. And the radio system itself is phenomenal. We have 100% uh, coverage. What's that mean? Of what? 99.9% .9 coverage of the entire Flint area and okay. probably 95% coverage of the Genesee County area. Yeah, that's significant. Yeah, we, it's a very good yeah. communication system. We're in direct contact through our own dispatcher with 911. We have citizens out in their own neighborhood. 
simply acting as the eyes and ears of the police department, looking for things that are out of place. You see a break-in in progress, well, that's immediately reported to 911. But if you see suspicious activity that you can establish a pattern for, or blight issues that need to be addressed by Raul, you record these on your log, and at the end of the day, we go through it, we see what kind of problem areas you have, and how we can best address them. This will be passed on directly to the police department. Okay, now we've talked several times, and I know you're kind of a little disappointed, and I'll share your disappointment with the numbers of participants you have. In fact, we had our neighborhood was being covered last night by the little lady in the red dress, in the, in the red uh, red coat, in the red car. Red car, red car. Red car. Her car and her coat's about the same size. It's such a little thing. But that was Miss Blondie, and I know that uh, there's only, there's very few of you that are doing this, and I know you had a personal heartache about that. You'd like to increase the numbers. So, folks, if you're listening and you would like to be a part of this program, it's really, it's, it's the eyes and ears of Flint, because the cops can't do it all. Naturally, we've heard that a hundred times. It's, it's we who go out, and I have driven with you on some occasions, particularly over the, the um, uh, Halloween time, you know, I have been done a few other times, but, you know, it's, it's us who can help the police do their job. So, Mark, put an appeal in, please, in your own way to get more people to help you with a phone number to call, if you don't mind. Certainly. I go driving through various neighborhoods, and I'm always getting people asking me, what are you doing? Why are you here? What are you? I explain it to them. They think it's a wonderful idea. They say, now, I want you in my neighborhood more often. Mm -hmm. you no, know, I take care of my neighborhood. You take care of your neighborhood. It's really simple. So how do they apply to do this, sir? Uh, right now, it's not fully formed. We've got some procedures and protocols that need to be refined. As it stands right now, you simply show up at the police station, main lobby, 730, when we're having an active patrol, which has generally been Friday and Saturday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The easiest way to keep up, rather than have a phone number to call, there is a Facebook page. Okay, here we go. If you will simply look for the Flint Citizens Radio Patrol, do a Google search, it'll pop right up. We post that. It's also posted through Flint Neighborhoods United. Okay, so Flint Citizens but go ahead, go ahead again. Flint so Citizens like Radio Patrol, Patrol okay. on Facebook. And then they could get this yellow light on their car. They could get the radio system. They could be a part of this neighborhood, really citywide watch. They could be a part of all of this, reporting suspicious or whatever activity, including blight. And then in an effort to clean up our city, both blight-wise as well as uh, in terms of reduction of crime activity. Absolutely. The crime reduction... <coughs> hinges on so many issues. You've got the environmental design, you've got making the... It's generally a way to allow the police to do their job, to allow the citizens more civic engagement. When you go out on patrol, it's not just the radios that make the difference. It's the fact that you're participating as part of a group. When you hear the traffic in other areas, you get a better idea of what's going on. And visibility alone will, Vis could possibly deter crime. Uh, that's the reason I was running a little yeah. late. As I pulled out of the house, and you know me, I'm usually 15 minutes early. Mm -hmm. We had a very suspicious character walking down the sidewalk, looking down everyone's driveway. I pulled over and asked him if he needed some assistance. He had a few choice words for me, and I informed him when I picked up my microphone that if he required police assistance, I could most assuredly get it for him in very short order. The gentleman decided that his curiosity would be better served in other areas, therefore we've eliminated that potential. Well, I, I hit it on the head then, didn't Absolutely. I? Possibly. And Possibly. the other thing that we offer, we have a very good training program that's being established. We brought what Detroit had down. We have uh, instructors. We have some detectives from Detroit come and pass on the lessons learned from their program. The training teaches you what to look for, what may be a little out of place, things that you wouldn't ordinarily think of, and also on proper radio procedure. We should be having another training session, I'm guessing within a month. Okay, and that would be at the police? 
stations primarily? We've had that training at the police station. We've also had that training at the Flint Library. The exact location, I don't know. But okay. if you follow the postings on the Citizens Radio Patrol Facebook page, mm -hmm. that will all be put out there. Okay. All right. Give, why don't you give that... Um, that website thing or whatever it's called. <laughs> I'm real good at that communication stuff. So do that website thing again in case somebody is interested would like to jot that quickly down. Give it slow and then we'll move into the kids because I've been waiting for a call from Grand Rapids. That's why we put the kids on next. Go ahead, sir. Citizens Radio Patrol. You may have to put Flynn in there. I don't think there's another one. But if you were to Google okay. Flint Citizens Radio Patrol Facebook, bam, take you right to us, okay. and if you would like to participate in the renovation of Flint, I can tell you this is an excellent way to do it, very exciting, we're going to be doing so much more than neighborhood watches, we will probably have a presence, traffic control, potential first aid during Back to the Bricks, all of these major events where you have to close down traffic, if you're willing, you can come out and relieve a paid police officer so they can attend to more pressing needs other than blocking a side street off. So this is not just riding around the car. There's some significant responsibility here. Yes, as a matter of fact, we participated in the open carry demonstration that was held here a couple of weeks yeah, ago. I remember that. A, a dozen people walking yeah. from the north side to downtown carrying AR-15s. We served as the observers, traffic control, and potential first aid responders for the police department so there wouldn't be any and issue. And that's significant responsibility. So this is not merely a thank you for your time and just go hide in the corner. You get a good exposure and you are providing a wonderful community service, both for yes, crime deterrent as well as uh, you know observing maybe some blight conditions that somebody might have missed that we could address as a city to clean that up. Did I kind of cover that pretty well? Absolutely. It's just one more tool that we have to bring Flint, the citizens of Flint, back together as a cohesive group so we can move on to Flint version 2.0. Okay, thank you, sir. And we're going to, if we have time, I, I put the kids on second because I thought by now we may have received a phone call from Grand Rapids. Our high school uh, robotics team is there participating right now. They were supposed to be uh, on, in fact, did I, I put it on buzz, didn't I, my phone, so I in just case did. they called me instead of... Um, somebody, I asked them to call the station so we could get a report on what they did. But leading up to that now, before high school comes, middle school. And we have um, on our table right now, or near our table, two young men that have participated, Mr. Callahan, in our, um, our middle school robotics program. Okay. And in fact, they won a very significant war down in Waterford Township. There were 40-some schools there, and they won, listen to my number, first place. <laughs> they were outstanding, and they also award. They were given the uh, uh, somebody. What's it called? Award All Star Rookie Award. Somebody address that one of you young men and introduce yourself, please, my young friends. Who's first? I'm Marzell Richmond. You have to pick that rascal up, Marzell. Meaning the microphone. Very good, Marzell Richmond. I've heard of you before. Where do you go to school? International Academy. My, what a fine institution. I'm so glad you mentioned that. <laughs> okay. Now, Marzell, I mentioned earlier in the program, if folks were listening, uh, reg regarding the underwater robotics program. I don't even know how you did that. Can you begin to explain a little bit about that? And then we'll have David Hare on here. So, David, what he doesn't say, you make sure you cover. Okay, Marzell, give us a couple minutes. Who are you? What grade you in? And stuff like that quickly. And then begin the process of that underwater uh, project you had. I'm Marzell Richmond. I'm in sixth grade. And I go to the International Academy of Flint. And we built an underwater robot that's like the... Uh, a, mi a mini sub. Yes. <laughs> mini submarine. Okay. Uh, how did it sink? We controlled it to like have fans and so it can like dive underwater. Okay. So, so but now because it's underwater, you you guys couldn't do like the other robot with the wi Wi-Fi stuff. No. You, you had to have a, a, a like a long umbilical cord. Marzell, you need to listen to Mr. Callan and get that microphone right up to your pretty little lips. <laughs> Kiss the mic. Kiss the mic. Okay. So um, explain how that worked. 
if you would, please. You, how, did you, how did you tell the robot what to do? Tell us that. Well, we had wires about 40 feet long connecting the robot and the control box. Okay, and what, what the hard part of this, David, I'm going to have you talk about the, what I thought was really the hard part, how you knew where the robot was going when you couldn't look. Okay, but what, what, and now, what was your responsibility in all of that the day of the competition? What did you do specifically? Because I don't know. I was the driver. Okay, and you stayed in the pool, right? No. <laughs> you didn't stay in the pool? No. Where were you? I was on the side of the pool controlling the Robots. Okay, David, you you also drove that day, didn't you? Yeah. Okay. What what did you? How do you? How does he? But I I knew the hard part because I was at Kettering University, who, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, is a great partner of ours. Oh, they they gave us their pool. They gave us their marvelous community robotics center. Just a great great partner. They've really advanced the thinking and the experience of young people, in middle school and high school, of course, as well. We are honored to be a part of the Kettering program. But David, the hard part was you couldn't look at the robot. So how do you know where the robot was under the water? How do you know how, how, where it was? Well, we had a camera on the robot and we had this little TV inside of a case that we had to look through the TV and it shows us what's inside of the water and where we're going. Okay, so you had to it's like looking in a mirror in a way. You were yeah. looking at the TV screen was everything backwards? By the way, if you if you moved your hand right, would the robot go left? No. It wouldn't. It would go the way that you that your hand went. Well, because it wasn't as hard as I thought. Then okay. And what part of that um, operation did you do? Because I know they had a speed race. They had picking up hooks and hanging them on stuff. And just tell us all that you did with that robot, sir. I kind of did a little bit of everything. Okay. That's very specific. Thank you. <laughs> it opens up the door for perhaps a question or two, Mr. Callahan. Okay. Marcel, what did you do besides... Well, you said you operated too. How did you trade off? You had different events then? Yes. I couldn't be there with you. I, I had stuff to do. I couldn't go down to Waterford that day. So how, how did that all work out? Well, we divided our time equally and shared the... Uh, Submarine. Okay. That, how many then drove? Just you two drove, or there no, were other? There were about five of us. Okay. And th we had girls there too. This wasn't a, a yes. young men only thing. No, I know. Okay, that's good. And uh, I know that we had we took first place in presentation, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. Hello. Yes. yes. Testing. Yes. Testing. One, two. We took first place in presentation, and then we got the All Star Rookie Award. How tell did uh, Mr. Bush is grumbling something over there? Trying what to say, sir? To tell him what was going on. And we had second place in innovative design. Wow. Innovative what? Design. Design? Really? Mr. Callahan, that's wow. not bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that's good. Now again, who led you in all this? We have to give your Mr. Your, Beard. Mr. Beard. He spends hours with with the kids, uh, and he's both the high school fact, He's down there now, and should have called by now, Mark Smith. He should have called us from. Grand Rapids way. He put his alarm on at 10.30, and I said, Mark, it's too early, meaning to remind him to call us at 11.30. So I knew when he did that, something was going to happen. Have him get in touch with me, and I'll help him with his communications. <laughs> okay, because he could be part of the citizens' emergency call art thing. <laughs> there we go, there we go. <laughs> okay, well, listen, gentlemen, let's ask a question now. Yeah, you had a little fun doing the robot under the water to bring the awards. How has this program thus far thus far affected you in terms of your thinking and you're thinking about maybe a career and some things you'd like to do with your life yet to come in high school. You'll continue with robotics in high school, you think? Yeah. Yes. Marzell too? Okay, all right, because I know Marzell and David are both very handy with their hands. Because uh, I used to lock my keys in my car, and I would call Marzell, and about 30 seconds later, here's your keys. <laughs> so he's very good with uh, using his hands and getting the 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 the, the hook. What's the what's the hook called? Keep the clothes hanger. The the thing you hang your clothes on. Clothes Coat hanger. hanger. There you go. Hard word, Mr. Bush to the rescue. Okay. <laughs> well, anyway, what Mike? I know you wanted to be a police officer, Marzell. Are you still thinking that, or has yes. this program impacted you in a different way? Still want to be a still, state police okay. officer. All right. You can be an underwater police officer, right? Okay. 
Is there such a thing, Mark? Absolutely. Yes, and yes. the police, <laughs> the state police now have a remote controlled quadcopter. It's about $100,000. I'm sure with your experience, you go into the state police, you'd be right up there on the top of the list to fly that thing. Now that's in the air, quadcopter. Like yes, a indeed. Like a helicopter? Yes, I hate to use the common term drone, but right. that's what it's being referred to as. Okay, got it. No, well, that's good. If we can use it for good purposes, that would certainly Absolutely. be valuable. David, what about you now? We haven't talked uh, about, is, has thus far, this program ha might have had an impact on you in terms of where you're headed in a career? I don't know. Just be honest with us. Um, yeah. Okay, well then, what, what do you think it might be? Grandpa's smiling. He knows something I don't know. Okay. What do you think it might be that you'd like to do? Grandpa's leaving the station. Verbosity <laughs> is not a fault in your case. Okay. <laughs> what do you think it might be? Engineering. Oh, my goodness. With That's great. Robots. And and go ahead. Yeah. Computers. Well, that's great. That's a great field. Wide open, yeah. wide open indeed. Wide open. And I'd love to have you stay and be a part of the Kettering family because they have treated us so very well. I'd love to, every year we, we are able to, Mr. Callahan, give uh, Kettering a few of our students, one, two, sometimes three. Um, and of course, it's a private school and the tuition is substantial, but Kettering has assisted us in providing some scholarship money. Not all, not full rides, right. but certainly yeah. enough to be attractive. Yeah. And we have several students there that are, and I talk with a couple of the instructors, um, who we know uh, very personally, and they say, you got some good kids here. Very good. In fact, one young lady out of one class got an A plus, A plus at Kettering, wow. came out of our school. I'd like to get her on the radio here during her off season because she goes to school, goes to work, goes to school. You know how they do that flip-flop plan. Mm -hmm. It's quite creative. I'd love to get her here as well. We called her Gabby. She's a beautiful young lady, intellectually as well as uh, in, in the, uh, the face, a very pretty young lady, and we'd love to put her on. Well, David and, and, uh, Mark, and uh, Marcel, thank you. Um, what do you got planned for this summer, you guys? This is a, I don't know what's going on. Working. Working, okay, very good. David, same thing. What are you gonna do? What's working mean? Um, cleaning up around the neighborhood. Oh, very good. Yeah, we Excellent. did a little of that last year, didn't we? Sure did. Sure did. Well, Mark, um, I'm going to bop back to you for a quick minute because you, you're taking a major trip here uh, come Monday. And as you've been selected, selected, and you are one of 10 or 12 people, hit that for a few minutes if you could, sir, because we're very honored. Seriously, folks, we're very honored to have Mark be a part of this program, particularly since he's about... 200 yards from our school. So this he's a neighborhood dude. So talk, talk, Mark, about that, please. Oh, first off, I'm very proud to have the International Academy as my next-door neighbor. Wonderful school. I only regret that I don't have a kid to put in there. Okay. They won't take a 37-year-old. <laughs> I've tried. I've tried. Okay. No, in my role with the American Red Cross, I'm the disaster service technology team leader for the 10 counties around Genesee or uh, Genesee County, We're going to Toledo here for a almost week-long training session on <coughs> millions of dollars worth of equipment that the Red Cross can deploy in a disaster. When we have a complete communications failure, I can come in with my disaster technology team, reestablish internet, radio, and cell phone connections for the Red Cross and their partners. It's very exciting. It's cutting edge technology. We're fully the equivalent to what the military deploys in the mm -hmm. field now. Mm -hmm. And this is a hands on training session. There's quite a bit that you have to study online prior to taking the class. Then we spend a week putting it all together, hooking up the equipment satellite phones, the internet, a server capable of running a thousand laptops from one three foot dish. Very exciting. Wow. That's why we call him the master of disaster, folks. He's getting trained even beyond what he has now, which is always very good. And when you come back, you'll, I think you're going to work with not only the city of Flint, but the township as well, with their CERT uh, operation, Citizens Emergency Response Team. So you might even be starting in the county before the city of Flint. Is that possible? Yes. Uh, even though we are going through the city and the township, the Community Emergency Response Team is a team to augment first responders in something like the Beecher Tornado, a mass 
casualty event. Mm -hmm. Which we never, do. never want. But no. when it, it should, one minute should it ever happens, uh, we are going to, uh, you know, we have to be prepared. And Mark is on the, on the cutting edge of that preparation, no doubt about that. But we don't want a disaster. So I say that in a humorous way in that that's what we call him. But clearly we're not hoping or praying or anything for any kind of... Uh, issue of any sort like that to, to yeah. happen to Flint or Genesee County. My only prayer is when it does happen, I'll be right in the middle of it. Yeah. And you will. No doubt I about will. it. No doubt about it. Young men, we only got a few seconds to go here. You guys want to close off with something like singing the national anthem or something? David, go ahead. Say something. Thanks for enjoying me. <laughs> Hello. I just want to wish a happy birthday to my Uncle Marky. Oh, very good. And back, you have a birthday today, too, I believe. Yep. Okay, you're seven today, right? No. No? Oh, okay. All right. Marcus, you're going to his birthday party, aren't you? Well, you are now, because I just invited you. <laughs> okay. Marcus, say something. Say something, Marzell. 30 seconds. off the air. Real quick. Go ahead. Uh, Happy birthday, David. Okay. <laughs> very creative, Mr. Callahan. Very creative. Mr. Callahan, we always close off in a very unusual day. And Paul Herring, it's always a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you. A Thank great, you. great friend and a great friend of our school. Mr. Bush, thanks for bringing David by. We always say, are you sitting at home in a fog, looking at a blog, or walking a dog? Hey, they all rhyme this time. Or are you celebrating the letter M for Mark Smith, we are going to say, are you markedly making monstrous mountains of microwave macaroni mixed with magic manicured molecules of magnesium matter manufactured with Minnie Mouse marshmallows mingled in a molten muddy manner mimicking mustache muskrat mammals with multi-manifold magnets causing malice in Massachusetts, Madagascar, or Mississippi. If you are, then look at somebody and say, that is some kind of school. Goodbye.